This week we're going to be talking about race and ethnicity. And essentially, I want to begin with the warm-up question. All right. So the question is, is it right because the law commands it, or does the law command it because it's right? So wherever you are right now, I want you to take a second just to think about this question. Right? We can break it up into two, two parts. Part A, is it right because the law commands it? Part B, or does the law command it because it's right? Now, I'm going to give you a bit of time to think about this question, mainly because growing up in a place like South Africa, this kind of question is quite complex. As I'm sure you're thinking, perhaps you're standing on either side, either point A or point B. Um, and some of you may be even at point C, which is a mixture of both. So what this lecture is really about is we're going to be talking about race, race and ethnicity. And we're going to be coming back to this question about what we consider to be right and whether that right comes from a law or from inside of us. And if we know something is right, how do we know it? So there's a bit of a philosophical component to this lecture. And hopefully we'll be able to draw it out and tease it out a bit more. I encourage you to talk to some of your friends about what they think about this question too. But let's get into it. Last week, we spoke about, we had a few readings. The first one was starting with self. Okay? And I, I think I need to almost bring out my own background into this lecture, mainly because it's very important for you to know who I am. Uh, we're teaching online, so it's a little bit difficult to get face to face uh, with one another. So who am I? I was raised in a racially based society. Okay, I, I grew up in South Africa under apartheid, which you'll hear a little bit more about later on in this slide, uh, in this PowerPoint. And that has really colored the way I look at the world. All right? It's always difficult to talk about race. In a racially constructed society, talking about race is very, very sensitive. So I'm going to be talking about my own experiences. And I know you at home or wherever you may be have had experiences You've heard about this word race, you've heard about this word ethnicity, you might be feeling uncomfortable, you might be feeling confident. Wherever you are, this lecture is about really beginning to unpack those experiences that you've had. All right, going back to the weekly uh, discussions, uh, here's two quotes from the discussions. I'll take the benefits into my educational environment by examining my own comfort zone and trying, get out, trying to get out of it. A comfort zone, okay? Some, somewhere where you may be right now. Um, and the point of this class is to really push your comfort zone a little bit. I hope that question that I posed earlier is getting you to think about your comfort zone. All right? Secondly, no one is perfect in the subject of multiculturalism and that it's OK to learn as you go. And knowing that makes me feel more comfortable. My job is to make you uncomfortable. Um, it's to make you think about things you perhaps haven't thought about. But in the same way, give you the support you need to examine your own comfort zone. All right, great. So let's get into it. Golnik and Chin, last, last week's lecture was about culture. Right? Now, I want you to think about culture in a very nuanced way. Okay? And I want to talk about this idea of a blueprint. Let me grab this right over here. A blueprint. Okay. I want you to think about when you wake up in the morning, which shoe you put on first, whether you brush your teeth with your left or right, uh, right hand. Okay? The things that you do are behaviors that form what's known as schemas or schematas in your mind. And these behaviors over time become patterns of behavior that are what's called normal. Right? We talk about this idea of being normal. It's normal for me to throw a ball with my right hand. It's kind of weird if I throw it with my left hand if I'm right-handed. Right? In the same way, culture, as we, as we discussed last week, is about you in the center. For those of you who remember, I'll draw this little diagram again with you in the center of it, your immediate family and friends over here, and the community at large around you, and how they influence you and how you influence them. And the way they influence you and the way you influence them becomes patterns of behavior, which is like a blueprint in your mind. OK. We, we used some terms last week. We used the terms enculturation. We used the terms socialization. OK. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about and building your, your knowledge base in this area. Okay? Then, we spoke about how it manifests in values, nonverbal communication, language, and institutions. We're going to be digging a little bit more into this. I'm just giving you a recap. All right. Uh. All right. I'm learning to use these things as, as much as you are at home. Okay. So if you're, if you're just thinking about what I've tried to say as I'm going through this, this presentation, I want you to think about 
if you had to describe your culture to an alien, what are the kind of things you would say? What are the kind of things would you do? Would you say 4th of July is a part of your culture? Would you say saying howdy is a part of your culture? What are the kind of things you... Okay, now let's get into race. Okay, so we've got this background of the last, this last week talking about culture, but now let's begin with the, the specific content of this uh, presentation today. Race. One interpretation is that it only refers to the physical features. So you can see me as a white person, right? Or you can see the color of my skin is different to the color of other people's skins that we interact with every day. So that's one way to look at it, okay? The other way to look at it is a socially constructed entity. Okay, I'm going to repeat that, a socially constructed entity. What that means is that I'm not just looking at you for what you look like. I'm actually giving you power or attributing power to you and you're attributing power to me. Okay, I'll get into a little bit more about that, what that means. We also need to talk about ethnicity because often with people's racial identity comes their sense of identity. Okay, and learning how to identify and facilitate discussions is vital as future teachers which is why we're in this class. Okay, great. Now, how does racism manifest itself? Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you into the way I grew up, okay, and I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to the way racism has operated in my world, and we're going to make connections, hopefully, to your classroom and to the environment in which you're placed in. And I'm going to give you a framework to do that. All right, so... Given all of that, what are some of key terms that we've taken out? What are some key terms that I've used? Here are some definitions, right? I've used the term socialization, how we learn social norms. The pencil is given a different power structure than just something that writes, that you write with. Enculturation, a process of acquiring the characteristics of a given culture. Ethnocentri ethnocentrism, inability to view other cultures as equally viable alternatives. So in South Africa, the system of apartheid was built on this idea of ethnocentrism. Assimilation. A group's distinct cultural patterns either become part of a dominant culture or disappear. So in South Africa, often what this would mean is that if you were a white South African who was somehow out of the dominant culture, they would assimilate you. They would bring you in. All right. Pluralism. Remember we spoke about the salad. Okay, we spoke about the salad. Each person has their own place in the salad. Prejudice, the way we think about things. Discrimination, the way we actually act on our prejudices. And finally, privileges. So being white in South Africa under apartheid brought not only privileges that one could easily understand, but sometimes privileges that one could not understand, and ones that were very difficult to, determ to determine. So the things to take away from this presentation. Number one, race and racism is as much to do with what people look like as it is to do with the power that people possess based on what they look like. Secondly, when we use language, symbols, institutions, and laws, we can really begin to deconstruct the way race and racism plays out in our society and in our schools. And thirdly, the reason why this is important for you as a teacher is because you will be in, in schools where you will be dealing with children who look different to you. And understanding yourself and your relation to them uh, will give you a, a useful framework to understand issues like discipline and issues like teaching and learning. Thank you for this presentation. I look forward to talking to you next week.